Did you hire Vindu? Named after the first names of its inventors, Joseph Luff and Harry Ingram, was published in 1955. The window is designed to give you a better understanding of yourself and other people in the communication between you. The model is a communication window that consists of four quadrants. There are two dimensions in the model. Others. What do they know about me, respectively, what they do not know? They know that I never drive a car. They do not know that it is because I've lost my driving license due to drunk driving. As well as myself. What do I know about myself and what I am unaware of? I'm aware that I do not like holding a speech for a large gathering. However, I'm unaware of that I say ah uh, or touching my hair when I have to say something. Out of the two dimensions, myself and the others appears four quadrants. The lines dividing the four quadrants are like window shades, which can move as an interaction progresses. The open quadrant is what is known by myself and known by others. The blind quadrant is what is known by others but not known by myself. The hidden quadrant is what is known by myself but not known by others. The unknown quadrant is not known by myself and also not known by others. Now follows how each quadrant must be understood. The open quadrant represents things that both I know about myself and that you know about me. I know my name and so do you if you have explored our website. It is factual information. But the quadrant can also contain feelings, desires and needs. In the beginning we know each other, the quadrant is not really large, since there has been little time to exchange information. But the longer we know each other and the more confidence we have in each other, the more the window shades move down or to the right. We know more about each other, you know more about me. The blind quadrant represents things that you know about me, but that I am unaware of. You may notice that my eye contact seems to be lacking in our ongoing conversation or I am interrupting you in your sentence. It's bad habit from my side, which makes communication between us difficult. If you choose to tell me, it becomes part of the open quadrant. The window shade moves to the right. But if you don't say anything, it remains unknown for me and it stays as a part of my blind quadrant. You know it and I do not know. The hidden quadrant represents things that I know about myself that you do not know. So for example, that I love dark chocolate. As soon as I tell you that information, I'm effectively pulling the window shade down and thereby moving the information from my hidden quadrant into the enlarged open quadrant. Until I told it, you were not aware of it, but you are now. The more I trust you, the more I might tell you about my secrets. How I lost my driving license, how I got divorced, what I think about our joint colleagues, and so on. I extend my open quadrant to you. Some people have almost nothing in the hidden quadrant. They publish all their intimate details online on social medias such as Facebook. The unknown quadrant represents things that neither I know about myself nor you know about me. So it's actually hard to come up with examples. I will however try. I was aware that I did not like to hold speeches for large gatherings. I later found out that this was due to lack of self-confidence. I simply could not imagine that I could say anything that might interest more people at once. Neither I nor others knew that this was the reason for my disgust 
about holding speeches. It is widely believed that we need to expand the open quadrant as far as possible. It provides a better communication between us. We believe this closure to be healthy. At least that's the impression one gets after reading Freud. However, my common sense tells me that it is not everything that all others should know about me and I don't want to know everything about others. But here are some examples of how to expand the open quadrant. I can make a part of the blind quadrant to a part of the open quadrant by asking for feedback from my surroundings. It could be that people would tell me that I'm touching my hair when I'm saying something or I have wandering eyes when I'm talking to them or I'm actually interrupting them. Then it would be part of the open quadrant. However, please be aware of that what other people think of you is subjective. So it is not sure that what they are saying is actually what is happening. You can also expand the open quadrant by telling something about yourself that are not known by others. You can go down and tell something that is in the hidden quadrant. However, please be aware that not everyone might be able to accept your hidden secrets. I got an advice when I was working abroad. Never say anything about politics, race or religion. The rule is probably true in most cultures. You are definitely better compared to a promotion if you have not told your boss about your alcohol and mental health problems. So if you must tell your secrets to someone, you have to choose that person very carefully. You can also expand the open quadrant into the unknown quadrant. You can actively ask others to observe you in different situations. How do you deal with a critical customer? How do we act to stress? The last aspect is mandatory for all pilots. If you do it voluntarily, remember to be critical with whom it is you let observe on you. It requires a great deal of trust. You may also jointly with others expand the open quadrant into the unknown quadrant. It is often the purpose of team building exercises among colleagues. By the ideal team building exercise, all participants get a larger open quadrant in relation to each other and thereby a better communication among each other afterwards. You can also make your own experience. You could drag aspects about yourself from the unknown quadrant into the hidden quadrant. An example is that you go hiking alone in a remote area and experience unknown aspects of yourself. If you later want to let it become a part of the open quadrant is of course up to you. You could say you get life experiences. You learn about yourself and we hopefully all do that throughout our lives. Now follows a criticism of the model that your higher window does not take into account that our limits regarding openness are very really different. It also varies how much we want to know about others. If your colleagues have family problems, some of them believe it should be shared with everybody. They place it in the open quadrant. Others keep it to themselves. They place it in the hidden quadrant. Not everybody wants to give all aspects about their private life away. Observe also that many do not want to know. They feel it uncomfortable if your open quadrant is too big. They have no interest in knowing anything about your private life. They see your cooperation as pure work related. Before you start using the model, you must be aware of 
where you yourself are placed and where you think the others are placed. You can give too little, but certainly also too much of yourself.